Back in the early 90s, I worked at a Blockbuster, so I was pretty excited to check out the new Netflix series named after that video rental chain. Does this sitcom capture nostalgia or falter with its obsolescence? After learning he is operating the last Blockbuster video in America, Timmy and his employees fight to stay relevant. The only way to succeed is to remind their community that they provide something big corporations can't, human connection. This is a 10 episode first season with each of the episodes being a little under 30 minutes, so it is a proper sitcom. This stars Randall Park, Melissa Fumero, J.B. Smoove, and Madeline Arthur. Now, the premise of the show really just revolves around the staff at the very last Blockbuster working to save their store from closing like the rest of the chain. Randall Park stars as Timmy, and he's the manager slash owner who takes on all the stress of keeping things afloat. This is your typical sitcom setup, where each episode has a small story arc to it, where the characters have to either solve a problem or tackle a new challenge. There's also a larger story playing out throughout the entire season, giving the episodes some continuity as they flow from one to the other. The first episode is pretty rough, and I wasn't sure if I was really going to like this. I mean, the characters, they just weren't clicking, and everything felt forced. From the situations, to the jokes, nothing was really coming across as natural. As the series went along, though, the characters, they did begin to grow on me, and I began to become invested a little bit in a couple of the arcs. Now, there were still some that were more situational and inconsequential within the larger scheme, but none of the characters were really abrasive, so even if I wasn't connecting with some of them, it wasn't a turnoff for the show. There's a great dynamic between Randall Park and Melissa Fumero, and it starts off awkwardly and, again, forced, but then I began to enjoy their banter back and forth. The story introduces a small romantic angle to the relationship, but it's never clear cut and simple, which then adds a lot of character conflict and tension. Now, I liked the awkwardness that was present between the two characters, but the situations, they did become pretty formulaic and repetitive across each of the episodes. Now, if you enjoy pop culture or even movie references, this show is packed with them. I mean, just about every conversation has some sort of tie in or even blatant call out to a pop culture moment. Now, some of it's clever, a lot of it, though, it's actually cringy. And while I appreciate how both Park and Fumero's characters are set up to be the Gen X duo who can just tie in all kinds of 80s and 90s trivia, so much of the delivery felt unnatural, and I was almost embarrassed for them to have to say their lines. Now, having worked in a blockbuster and then in a record store, I totally appreciated the customer interactions that are showcased in this. I mean, there are the most random questions that people have. And the best ones are when they're looking for a movie, but they have zero clue as to who is in it or what it's even about, other than maybe a very, very vague description. And then when given suggestions, the customer is adamant that that's not one of them. Now, there's an ongoing bit with a customer that is similar to that, and I could relate to it, but it just wasn't funny. And that's probably the biggest downfall of this whole show. It's just not funny. There are humorous moments here and there, but nine times out of 10, a joke felt completely flat or then it made me wince at how forced it felt. I mean, I kept waiting for the comedy to just find its groove and then make me chuckle. I wasn't looking for laugh out loud. I mean, the cast has it in them and most have some great timing and even delivery, but the dialogue that they're given, it's just terribly unfunny. I was almost wishing that they'd abandon the whole comedy attempt and just go with the relationship stories that were being set up. The cast clicks and it functions well as a team, so there is a familial aspect to the show, which I think is nice. And there are small conflicts and setbacks that characters have to face, and that's when I found them to be the most engaging, when they're working to solve something. I just didn't want to have to listen to another forced joke. There's also an element to the relationship story that I began to be sucked into. I mean, we can see the trajectory that the show is taking, and the predictability, though, it just didn't bother me. I mean, I was getting a bit anxious at where some of the situations were headed because it was obvious there was going to be some sort of train wreck, and I just didn't want the characters to experience that pain or the awkwardness. So here's the thing. I, I think if you watch this as sort of a short-form, lighthearted family drama, this is an okay watch, just thanks to a cast that begin to grow on you with their eccentricities and their quirks. But if you're going to watch this as a comedy, I think you're probably going to be disappointed and feel like you're wasting your time just trudging through clumsy attempts at humor. And I'm also a bit afraid this isn't going to get a second season. Now, while I wasn't a huge fan of the show, I also want to see where things are headed because the season ends with a ton that's unresolved. So overall, Blockbuster fails to provide the comedy that's needed to make a situational comedy funny. The cast is charismatic and the pop culture references are ever present, but those don't add up to enough to make this show enjoyable. As a lighthearted family drama, this can be endurable, but that also means having to slog your way through unpleasant comedic bits. 
The premise is a good one, and the cast made this promising. But if you're on the search for something to make you laugh, keep perusing that new release wall for something better. There's no sex or nudity, a lot of profanity, and some violence. I give Blockbuster two out of five couches. So would you rent from a video store if one was still open near you? I mean, I don't even use Redbox anymore since streaming has just become so prevalent and easy. But let me know what you do in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.